So I'm just going to move this a little bit over here. Uh, hopefully this won't be too squashed. Uh, and then the increase multiplier. Move this up here a touch. So, like I say, hopefully this won't be too messy. Uh, but the description here is uh, each time that you, you uh, increase your score multiplier, you get a higher score, obviously. So it's a multiplier times two, times three, times four, and so on. Uh, and each score multiplier grade costs um, five Bs. Okay, so multiplier grade, and I want to just move these up as well. So in the left-hand side here in the hierarchy, I'm, I'm clicking on the um, uh, the objects that I want to move, and then I'm hit, holding Control or Command on a Mac, and then clicking on the next one so that I can multiple select. Uh, just move this up. I'm going to shift this be out of the way, uh, this fly out of the way a little bit. I'm going to shift this fly. I might move him down later on, maybe to this side. Uh, we'll see. Okay. I think that's all right. And then if I click on each of these, uh, to, to multiple select like that, if I click on the objects I want, if I want to select all four of these, the bottom one, if I hold down shift and then click, it will highlight all of these in the hierarchy. So that's, uh, hopefully you guys find that handy. Okay. I think that should be fine there, and then this next button, this, which takes you back to the main menu, I'm just going to bring this down a little bit to there, okay. So things might look a little bit crammed on here, um, but I do like to keep things on the same screen, and the reason is is that I don't like to have sort of things hidden too far down in like a sub-menu. Um, I want to keep things like where the, where the player can see them uh, straight away after the game finishes. So for example, um, uh, I think Jetpack Joyride has, uh, once you finish the game in Jetpack Joyride, if you played that very, very cool game by, um, uh, uh, what's the, uh, the company that did the Fruit Ninja, Brick, Brick something, I've forgotten the name, sorry guys, uh, Half Brick, Half Brick. Um, they, they basically have a play again button and then underneath that they have a stash button and you click on stash and it shows you the shop and all the bits and bobs and things that you can buy. Uh, personally, I like to have things sort of like immediately in, in front of the user so that they know about it. You know, they, they think, oh, I can get this and get that, and it's not hidden. Because some people, most of the time, they just click play again and they never see that you can buy these extra items. Um, so that's just a personal a personal thing, uh, preference that I have, and, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I, I can't say I've tested it uh, thoroughly, but it's just a, a sort of a little philosophy, I suppose, on game design. So I think this is looking okay. Uh, if I okay, so I'm going to click on the 5,000 Bs. Command and C, Command and V to copy and paste, or Control and C, Control and V on a PC. So I'm going to say 5,000. Uh, I'm going to say 10,000 for these ones. There's 10,000 Bs. I'm going to move it over. Uh, I'm going to rename the text, which is here. This is the text mesh object, and I'm just going to delete this. 10,000 Bs, I think that fits in okay, that's fine. And then click on the 10,000 Bs, Command C, Command V, move it over. And we're going to give the user here is going to be 20,000 Bs. So let's just click on this object, click enter to rename it. 20,000, and then the text mesh, if it ever collapses like this, click on this little arrow here and it'll expand again. So the text, which is this text here in the in the front, by the way, which we're actually seeing in the game scene, change that to twenty thousand. Might need to just resize this a little bit because the text is sort of going over the size of touch, uh, the side of touch. So let's just reduce that down a little. And I'm going to expand this and the wood board, which is a child object, just make this a little bit bigger, and that fits in there nicely. I'm going to do the same for 10,000 just because it's a little bit squashed. Okay, get the wood board, make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, and then this fly, I'm just going to shift this guy up here a little bit just so we've got a little bit of, you know, a bit of variety and sort of. Uh, 
some interesting art which is uh, put around the screen. So, um, okay. So I'm just thinking about the next steps. Like I say, this is a developer diary video. This is this is uh, just the general development process. This and actually, this is not a tutorial where I figured out each step or anything. Uh, but hopefully, it gives you guys a good insight into the development process. Uh, you can get a higher score. So with these twenty thousand bees, thousand next. Okay. I think. Um, you know, I think, I think we're doing okay here at the moment. Um, I'm going to test this on my iPod shortly and also on my iPad. Um, I think I think so far this should be okay. If we need to change this later, I can change this. Uh, file, save, scene, and save projects. I, I remember to do that sort of regularly in case things crash. Uh, sometimes it does crash, not very often at all, but when it does crash, uh, you sort of lose the formatting that, and the things that you've done inside of the editor here, which is which can be a real problem if you've done a lot of changes. Uh, so always, always, you know, just uh, get into the habit of clicking file saves, save projects, especially when you're building and you do a build to the iPhone or to an Android. So I think this is okay. Um, okay. So the next thing we want to do is I want to decide upon the the prices of these uh, and set them up inside of iTunes. So if I go back to iTunes here, click on App Summary, and I'm just going to make a note of these. So I think I said 5,000 Bs, I said 10,000 Bs, and we also said 20,000 Bs, I believe. And I think right now, for 100 bees, which is which is like say the base price, we've got one dollar or 99 cents. Okay, so it kind of helps us to figure out how much the other ones should be. Uh, obviously, the upsell should be if you're buying 5,000 bees, then overall, if you're buying in bulk, it should overall be cheaper uh, per bee. Uh, so uh, let me just go to manage in-app purchases, so we can see the uh, the in-app purchase data. And this is going really slow, so my apologies for this. <laughs> oh, I apologize on, on a part of the local internet service because it's incredibly slow. Uh, whilst I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to open up this other script that I'll need to to uh, to check uh, when we click on the bees. So when we click on the bees, um, what I'm actually doing is this in this general script. I keep a, a sort of general script. Um, uh, game objects and inside of that general script so is the scene, the main game scene scripts which handles things like going to the next scene, uh, perhaps updating some text. If the scene is not very complicated I'll also inside of this general script object I'll also keep the uh, any purchases so if the user taps on like these get 500 bees or a thousand bees that'll be handled inside of this script as well. So I'm just going to double click on this and open up uh, mono develop so I can see it. All right, so okay. So I'm just going to double check here, guys, how much the how much each of these are costing right now. So I'm pretty sure 100 bees was one dollar, uh, and this is just so I can uh, this is just so I can check how uh, how much the other ones should be. So price tier one, which is one dollar, yeah, done. And then I think what was the next one? Uh, five hundred and a thousand. So five hundred bees, a thousand bees. Okay, so five hundred. Let's just check how much this one was. I think this was two dollars. I believe we'd set the price to be. Okay. Sorry, you can't see what I'm clicking at the bottom. I'm just clicking between the icons here of Mono Develop and Unity. Uh, and also of uh, Chrome, so I can see my iTunes Connect page. And so, fly slice shop scene. Okay, so this is the main game script. And if I check down here, okay, yeah. So what I've done is basically, whenever the user taps on uh, uh, get 100 bees 3D text, which would be this one here, for example. Uh, as you can see, we've got a, uh, a box collider on there, so we know when it's actually been tapped. 
uh, if it's an iPhone, uh, we, we're separating this out into iPhone and Android. Uh, we'll put the Android one down here later. Uh, it will show the the binding view, which is like this little uh, sorry, the etc. bindings a uh, show activity view, which is this little like activity circle, which says that something's happening. You guys have probably seen that. And then it will check if we can make payments, and then it will try to purchase the 100 Bs, and that's when the pop-up appears saying, hey, would you like to purchase this? So that's what we want to do, and we want to do this basically for the other ones as well. And I think I should just be able to copy and paste all of these, because it, I've pretty much set this up to be the same for each of them, which is kind of handy. Uh, and so like I was saying before, you know, being able to do quick updates and, and, and change things quickly and is, is extremely important. Um, I think in the independent uh, in the indie development scene, so that's why it's good to to have these things set up, and you can sort of copy projects and then update projects to be a new game. But the structure of how people actually purchase things, the game can be completely different. But behind the scenes, you know, the code of of actually uh, clicking the next button to say to go to the next scene, or having a leaderboard ready, or something like that. If it's already set up in one project, then just you have to rename things, then great, it saves a lot of time. So this is get 5000 bs 3 d text, which is this one, and these are all named the same, so this should all be fine. <coughs> so, okay, so I think I should be able to just name these the same. So 5000 bs product ID, 5000 bs product ID. Okay, we said 5,000, then we said the next one was 10,000, I believe. Yeah, and then 20,000. 10,000 Bs, 3D text. 10,000 Bs is the product ID, and then we want to try to purchase 10,000 Bs product ID. And then I'm going to highlight, and I'm going to copy and paste this one below it. And this is going to be 20,000, 20,000 Bs. 20,000 Bs, and I'm clicking Command and C or Control and C to save that script. And da, 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 da. I'm just going to do a really quick check here to make sure that this is working. Uh, I'm just going to add a debug text in here. And what debug text does is it's just uh, it shows a really quick. Um, it shows a little message to the console to, uh, for any information that you want to give. Um, so I'm just going to, when the user taps on this, it's going to show in the console uh, 5,000. And this just lets me know that oh, the, the taps are working. And then uh, when people are actually tapping on that in the game, it's making this code below happen. And it's just a check. Because if you load something onto a, if you build it to the iPhone or build it to the Android, that can take a bit of time, and, and it's, this is just a really uh, a fast way, and it's, it saves time in case you run into any problems. So I'll just move this up slightly so you guys can see the. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, I'll just move it up there so you can see this little uh, uh, status uh, update thingy move up at the bottom right. Okay, so I pick up play. Now we're not going to be able to do any purchases because we're on the device, but there we go, 5,000 at the bottom left, shown in the console, 10,000, 20,000, and that's all good. So that's working fine. Okay, so 500 Bs was tier 3, tier 3 comes to $3. Okay. And then I think 1,000 was 5, I believe, but we'll just double check that. Okay, so a thousand bees tier five, uh, four ninety nine. Yeah, so we'll just call off five dollars. Okay, yeah. So okay, so from this we know that uh, a thousand uh, a thousand bees cost five. So we want to kind of figure out like how much five thousand bees. Uh, sorry, a thousand bees cost five dollars. So how much should five thousand bees cost? It should be less per bee, uh, because players are sort of buying in bulk at that point. So let me figure this out. So if 1,000 is five, so if it was directly, that would be $25. So we want to make it less, of course. We don't want to charge $25 for that. So I think that should be, say, $15. Uh, 
uh, if it was 10,000, uh, 1,000 bees, 10,000 bees, that's 10 times more, and that's $5, that's 50, so that would be $50, which we will obviously want to discount that by a lot. So say $30, and then I think if we use the 1,000 as our base, um, that would be 20 times as much, which would be 100, and obviously we don't want to charge 100, we want to give, want to give discount for that. So 1,000, 20, 20 times 5 would be 100, so I think $50 for this one. Okay. And like I say, it's, it's, it's highly unlikely that anyone's going to buy, uh, well, obvious, obviously the mass majority of people will not buy a $50 purchase, but for those who are really into the game, and as we add more features and more items and more updates, say like new game modes, new bees, uh, sorry, new, new, new uh, items in the game, like different swords and things, then people can use these, uh, use these, this currency to, to get new things. Um, but it's always smart to have uh, an in -app, a high in-app purchase in the game. So I think that should be fine there. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to just uh, stop this video for a moment, and I'm going to come back and start another recording and continue on this. And, uh, yeah, we'll hopefully get this done in the next couple of hours, and I will catch up with everybody soon, okay? Happy developing, everyone. Bye.